The pictures you're going to see in this video are all from one of my son's school. So if you have kids in school in, in North America, this, this is potentially what your kids are exposed to every day and I wanted to make this video to show other parents and any, any person out there who's interested in this what they're doing to our kids in school. So here I am again making another video about the transgender issue and the more um, the bigger parent of this which is the LGBT community. Now I'm just gonna stick to LGBT because I can't keep up with all of the, the diff I don't know so I just say LGBT and um, what they're doing in schools is they're going after the kids to brainwash them. So I want to go over today how uh, the whole activism side, so it, it started as the, the lesbian and gay uh, community and they started to, to have activism so that they could make sure that they weren't treated differently or had uh, bigoted uh, society comments against them. And, um, and, and I think they've achieved that. I mean, we are very, very accepting in Canada of, of gays and we have gay marriage now. And I mean, I've known a few gay people in my life and I didn't treat them any differently. I mean, I still did, did business with them and all that. So it, it, it's not an issue in Canada. But recently, and I believe it's with this issue, so in a way, I, get, I think I've cracked the code on this. I think I get it now. But how they've gone from just doing the activism to now propelling their movement into the full ideology arena. And it's become an ideology because now they are using the full force of the government. So the government has a lot to gain by using movements such as these uh, and in a, in a way abusing them, taking advantage of those movements to, to extend their arms into the family, to do, to separate kids from their parents and all that kind of stuff. And it's in fact what has happened with this whole ideology now. So the transgender ideology, the LGBT ideology, have now partnered up with the government for um, massive power to the government at this point. Massive funding, lots of money, lots of power, like any good saga, it's always money and power. So the government of Canada, always hungry for more power, looking for different ways to find uh, more ways to, to implement laws that are against people, that's what they're doing. So how it starts in school is they'll, they'll take kids and, hey, kids gather around, here is what you're gonna learn today. Hey, Jeffrey, did you know that when you were born, the doctor assigned your, your gender to you, but he may have gotten it wrong, and then you may uh, feel like something else, but be trapped in the body that you have. So you may be a different gender, but be in the body that you have. So essentially what they've done is they've split up the gender and the sex part and they've made them as independent items that, uh, that can function without the other. Biology dictates the opposite where you're born with your body and your brain and your brain is part of your body and your genitals that are all part of what makes you a male or a female. And how confusing can that be for the, the kids, right? And I would love to see this kind of gender ideology and put onto different medical fields. Like, for the record, doctors don't assign a gender. <laughs> doctors take the baby, they look at the, 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 the sex organs, and they say, oh, it's a male or it's a female. It's a classification. It's a biological observation in order to classify the, the baby as male or female. They're not assigning. I mean, the doctor doesn't sit there and go, Hmm, I feel that this little baby born right now is a girl. Let's make him a girl. It has, it has body parts of a male, but let's just say it's a girl. And then now we have a whole bunch of crazy people out there saying, oh, I'm gonna let my child decide their own gender. So birth certificates go blank in that section now because they want the child to decide their own gender. The child doesn't have that choice. You are the gender you're born with. You are male if you've got a penis and you're a female if you've got a vagina. That's it. There is no deciding. Until a couple years ago, it was called gender dysmorphia. Um, dysphoria? Dysphoria. Jesus, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But anyways, 
Um, but because I'm not a doctor, I put in the description here a whole bunch of doctors that you can listen to who will tell you the real deal and, and show you how it's, it's become part of a charlatan profession almost. It's like the new charlatans are these transgender activists who are trying to convince people. So why are they going after the kids? It's very hard to convince an adult that male and female are the same. Right? We're the same in the, under the eyes of the law in Canada, but we're not the same in terms of biology. But that's what the whole agenda is. The whole agenda is to erase uh, male and female and claim that they're both the same. So they're saying things like males can have babies, uh, males can breastfeed, women can do the same kind of work as a man because they're just as strong when it's actually physiologically not accurate to say that. So. The government is going after the kids in the public school system because it's easier to brainwash them than it is to brainwash the adults around, around them who have a bit more knowledge, right? So that's what they're doing. These images from my kids' school, they're doing it. It's relentless, it's omnipresent, and they're going after your children. Now this ideology doesn't have a leg to stand on when you think about it and when you when you actually listen to the medical community and the American Pediatrics Association and all of the scientists who are weighing in on this you realize very quickly that the gen the transgender and ideology is entirely made up there's a lots of money to be made up and universities have entire gender studies departments there's a lot of money to be made but they needed a way to force it down everybody's throat they couldn't it, it, you can't convince people by telling them, hey, look, that guy's a girl, but he's a boy, but he's a two-spirited, but then on Saturday he becomes another gender. The, any normal people out in the real world who's just trying to make a living and, and come home and have dinner and, you know, see their kids, they won't buy into that. Um, so they have now transfer this whole activism into ideology by getting the full force of the government. So now the government is growing because of this movement. It is taking more powers over the citizens, more powers over families, and taking away the rights that families and parents used to have. So there's a couple of examples of this that has already happened. We dealt in Canada with what we know as Bill C-16. Now that was voted. Before it was voted, uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson and Dr. Gad Saad both went in front of the, the Senate and there was another lawyer, I believe, who also testified in front of the Senate saying this is uh, unacceptable under our law because it's the removal of free speech. It's an attack on free speech. So that this is what made uh, Dr. Peterson quite famous is the whole Bill C-16 transgender issue. And it's, it's basically compelling people to say to transgender to call them whatever the the the, uh, the pronouns they want, so I'm legally obliged now to call a transgendered in individual by whatever series of pronouns he, z, g, whatever want me to call them, under penalty of a fine or jail time. So this is where the government expanded their rights and is becoming more of a big government, more uh, towards a 1984 Big Brother type of government. And another example of that is in uh, Bill 89 that we have in Ontario specifically. And what that bill says is if you have a child, so you as the parent, your child tells you he's transgender and you don't do anything to help him his journey in converting over to whatever gender he claims to be, the government now has the right to take away your child from you. And the government will then proceed to put the child somewhere where they will enforce, whether you like it or not, the, the gender conversion. So I, the, the government and I have different views on what's child abuse. To me, it's child abuse to force a kid to, to dress as the other gender when they don't understand any of this stuff. This is why they're your child. You're supposed to help and guide them through this. And the government views it as child abuse if I don't convert. Now, you know, when they're small, they want you to put them in dresses and whatever, like put the little boys in dresses, cut their hair, change their name. But as they approach puberty, the government wants you to pump them full of hormones and chemical castration drugs. This is irreversible. This is something that is to me child abuse especially given the medical community who has studied this 
they have come out saying that in the cases of boys, 98% of them will grow out of this idea that they're another gender by the time they reach maturity. And 80% of the girls will grow out of it. So if, if you have that kind of odds, you know, if I was told, you know, 98% of the chance you put money in that, uh, that casino slot over there, you're going to get money out of it, I would go there, right? I would go with that. Now, it's the same for kids. They, they have 98% of a chance of growing out of it. So let's just wait and see, right? That's my whole philosophy on transgender. But the ideology, the transgender ideology, has now allowed the government to take the power to decide on behalf of me if I don't get along with the ideology. Very draconian, very totalitarian, and very scary that this is happening in Canada. So Bill C-16, Bill 89 are two examples where the government stands to gain lots by going alongside with these movements because the government gets more power, the government can now take tax money and throw it at those things, they can now propagandize it um, towards your kids. And what's going to happen next, right? If, if, if we think that the transgender ideology is, is the end of the line in this, we have to think again because what's coming next is pedophilia. They've already started normalizing that. But the next step will be, you know, if you don't allow your kid to sleep with a neighbor who's 60 years old, you could have your kid removed from you. The government will make laws to make pedophilia legal and they will then make laws to take kids away from parents who don't go along with it, who don't go along with child marriage, who don't go along with whatever else law they want to put together. You know, you know, the government is using these movements. There's no compassion there. They're not trying to do what's best for the child. They're not trying to do what's best for the, the transgender people or the gays or the queers or the lesbians or whoever. They're not looking after the people what they're doing is they are looking after their own interest in gaining more power. That is it. That's the end of the story. That's all the government is doing. And they're doing it to your kids right now by putting all sorts of propaganda right in front of them in their school, by placing people in schools masquerading as counselors, but who are really LGBT activists, who are there to report to the government which child in the school is LGBT, which child in the school is potential transgender. They're there, they're planted in schools, and they will report, they'll start reporting up on parents. The separation of the kids from their parents is a, a strategy that's been done by many, many governments in the past, many of the totalitarian governments. You have the USSR with Stalin, he encouraged the kids at school to tell against their parents for anybody who didn't go along with the collectivization. In, in, in China, Mao was encouraging pa kids to denounce their parents. And it's very, very serious that we have this in Canada now. So when you go to your child's school and you see an LGBT poster there, when you see reference to transgenders, it is not about helping those people. It's not about any of that. It's about brainwashing your child so that he grows up to believe whatever the government says. So by the time the government introduces new, more draconian, more all-encompassing laws, your child is already uh, primed to receive that. That's what the whole deal is. So we have to stop this transgender ideology. We have to realize what's happening. I, I'm still for the, the gay rights and all that. I think we should help the transgender individuals to, you know, to the best of our ability without going to extreme measures like chemical castration when they're not even grown-ups yet. Um, but I think each transgender has the right to have the help that they need in, in the circumstance that they are in and not just a, apply a blanket, you know, let's start the, the hormone blockers and the chemical castration right away because we're, you've said you were transgender. Um, it's gonna mess up a lot of kids. It's gonna mess up a lot of families and a lot of lives and our society can't survive on believing that men and women are the same biologically speaking. We have to go back to a, a more re biological reality, medical reality, and, and go through all the links that I've put in the description if you're interested in hearing about all these doctors who will uh, explain this all in, in more scientific terms than I ever could. 
So there you have it, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have these posters in your schools. And I will see everyone in the next one.